Hi, I'm Nick Nagurka with LiveX Production, and today we're going to be unboxing the Blackmagic camera fiber converter, which is one of two pieces required for the full camera chain for an Ursa Broadcast or Ursa Mini Pro. So let's have a look. I'm going to pull out the trusty multi-tool for this one. Comes nicely packaged in a very nondescript white box. Feels nice, nice and heavy and solid. So let's have a look here. So, classic black magic comes with a nice little welcome card here. Four gigabyte SD card with the manual and the software required for it. We've got a plate. We've got a nice little Ziploc bag with some machine screws. And a full encasement of styrofoam. Wow, this unit looks great. It looks really nicely done. Let me give you guys a little better look here inside the box because it's set pretty deeply, packaged pretty well. Toss that styrofoam here. What else have we in here? We've got some SDI jumpers here. Three of them to be exact. What else is in the box? Nothing. That's it. I'm just gonna put away my multi-tool here to be safe. All right, so this is the, once again, the camera end of the Blackmagic Simpty fiber chain intended for the Ursa, Ursa Broadcast series of cameras. I mean, this looks really nice. I, and I have to say I've been excited to check out this converter for a while because of its functionality increase for our, our camera chains. Um, it, it looks quite impressive. Uh, so let's just go over the basic connections here. So starting on the side here, We've got our SDI I.O. We've got SDI in, out, and a reference out. And then we have a LAN connection, a USB-C connection, and then to connect to the camera itself, we've got a multi-pin connector here with a little whip, and that's going to connect to your camera back uh, and on top, we've got a V-Lock plate. And let's see, on the other side here, we've got a DC out on a DTAB connector. We've got buttons for return one, return two, which are your video returns. There's a call button. Oh, nice, there's the little uh, PTZ output as well on a DB9. So if you had PTZ heads that took RS-422 control, you could use this. It's pretty neat. And on the back here are, here's where it gets, uh, gets fun. So you've got a nice little iris rocker here. Uh, you have a button for the lights on or off. Not exactly sure what that does. So we've got buttons here for return one and return two. Uh, Looks like there are indicators here for power tally and fiber connectivity. Uh, we have a push focus button, a record button, and then you have two intercom channels here. So interestingly, um, Blackmagic calls these program one, in, intercom one and intercom two, but you have controls for program one and program two. Um, so I'm assuming those are auxiliary channels on those four wire circuits here. Uh, you have buttons on here for, um, oh, I see, they're for two headsets, it appears. Okay, cool. Uh, so you have rocker switches for your mic on or off to switch between the production channel and the engineering channel, which is kind of nice. It's a two-channel uh, intercom circuit here. You've got an overall volume control, it appears. It's nice, these, these uh, wow. 
these pots feel really, really solid, which is kind of a rarity these days. They feel extremely smooth. This is nice. Hopefully they shouldn't be scratchy or weird at all. Um, that's great. Uh, we've got two uh, Amphenol 5-pin female XLR connectors here for headsets. So if you use Clearcom, uh, you'll need to have a turnaround, but that's okay because those are pretty easy to come by or easy to make. All right, so we have, oh, cool. So we have, uh, looks like a tracker multi-pin on a Limo connector and you have a DC out uh, Limo there, which is nice. And then on here we have SDI outs one, two, and three. Nice recessed spigots. Um, it's compact. I could see uh, you might want to have a, a trumpeter available to uh, access these BNC spigots, just in case you can't get your fingers in there if you have kind of fat fingers like I do. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have, oh, so we have audio inputs as well, two analog XLR connectors, Amphenol connectors, um, and you can switch between line and mic level as well as there's a selection for AES EBU, which is really, really nice. Um, I'll have to check the manual to see whether you can get both channels out of, out of each of these uh, audio circuits, but that would be pretty cool because it would give you four channels of audio instead of just two. You have phantom power switches right here for phantom power on and off. They feel quite solid. The whole face plate of this uh, is metal, which is just really nice. I mean, it adds some heft to the camera, but it also kind of balances it nicely. And uh, last but not least, we have the uh, Simpty Hybrid connector over here. Uh, it's on a nice pivoting spigot. Uh, you can have, a, I don't know how well you can see it here, but uh, it looks extremely well constructed inside. You're going to use the Limo uh, hybrid fiber connector uh, with your, in conjunction with the truck ends of this unit. Very nicely laid out, it's got a nice dust cap. All the connections on this unit have nice rubber dust caps that are tethered, which is a nice little touch, helps from keeping them, uh, helps to keep them from getting banged around, and just helps to keep all the dirt out when you're on the road. So overall, we're very excited to be able to put the Blackmagic uh, Simpty Fiber Chain into use. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great addition to our live arsenal uh, it's going to allow us to do power and signal and control and intercom all over one singular Simpty Fiber cable. Um, and uh, it's going to be really beneficial for us. Very excited to test it out. Very excited to test all the functionality th that uh, lies in this device. Uh, thanks for watching the unboxing with us. Uh, I'm Nick Nagurka from LiveX Production. Please follow us at LiveX Production on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and uh, we'll see you next time.